What if I told you that true strength doesn't come from grit or determination, but from joy? Today, we'll explore how the joy of the Lord fills us and overflows into love for others, giving us strength to live as God actually calls us to. Our bottom line for today is this, when God's joy fills us, his love flows through us. We'll dive into that and more today on the Five by the Fire podcast. Welcome to the Five by the Fire podcast brought to you by Freedom Story Media and the Ordered Chaos Club. I'm your host, Pastor Fury, also known as Armand Sheffy, and I get the pleasure of being the executive director of the Unshackled Network, this family of missionaries that exist to help the marginalized experience freedom in Jesus through equipping spirit-empowered disciple makers called to the forgotten. In season one of this podcast, we discuss the day's passages briefly, right? In season two, uh, each and every day, we gave you scripture meditation time. Now in season three of this podcast, we're sharing weekly insights, I believe that are coming directly from the Lord for you today. And I pray that they bless you, that they truly do bless your heart. So um, let's go ahead and talk about the purpose of this podcast, which is to get you in God's word. If you're reading along with us, as I hope you are in the McShane Bible reading plan, the passages for today are 1 Chronicles 16, uh, James chapter 3, Obadiah 1, and Psalms 92 through 93. And let me encourage you, get in God's word. So if you can give him some time today, start off in those passages. And then we're going to read something today that I believe God has given me directly for you. Pause the podcast now. Hey, come on back when you're done. So let's dive in. Uh, the text that we're looking at today is in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10. Uh, Nehemiah said, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared. This day is holy to our Lord. Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's Nehemiah 8, 10. So let's look at the context. Nehemiah and the people of Jerusalem had just finished rebuilding the city walls after returning from their period of exile. As the people gathered, Ezra, he read the law of Moses to them. And for the first time in years, they're actually hearing this. And hearing God's word brought deep conviction. They began to really weep as they realized the impact of their sin. But instead of letting them simply dwell in that grief and lament, Nehemiah and the leaders encouraged them to celebrate. Why? Because the day was holy and God's mercy and faithfulness were on display. They said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. This wasn't just about personal joy, about being you know, uh, joyful in, in uh, an individual way, but about experiencing God's joy together as his people. Um, let's think about, you know, joy and strength. The phrase, the joy of the Lord is your strength reminds us that our true source of power and resilience isn't in our own effort, but it's in the joy that we find in the Lord. This isn't a shallow, fleeting happiness. It's a deep, unshakable confidence in who God is and what he has done. It's that kind of joy that reminds us, even in moments of conviction or hardship, that his love never fails. And here's the most amazing part. When we are filled with that joy, it doesn't stop there. It overflows. It moves us outward to love, to generosity, to action. God's joy gives us strength, not just for ourselves, but for serving one another. Interestingly enough, as I was reading this passage, it reminded me of a similar theme in Isaiah 58. God challenges his people about what true worship looks like. In verse 7 of Isaiah 58, he says, Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? He talks about pouring out yourself on behalf of the poor. Both Isaiah and Nehemiah highlight that our connection to God, whether through joy or worship, should always flow outwardly. The joy of the Lord isn't something that we hoard for ourselves. 
It's meant to spill over in acts of compassion and generosity, bringing life to those around us. So this truth, you guys, it's played out in my life so many times. Um, when I'm filled with the joy of the Lord, and I know it, when I'm filled with him and surrounded even by his people, I find myself pouring out love and compassion in ways that surprise even me. Whether it's offering comfort or serving in some practical ways or simply being a light in the room, his joy fuels my action. I've also even noticed the opposite can be true. When I choose generosity, God increases the tangible joy in my spirit. One of the clearest examples of this I remember, actually, I talked about it in a recent episode. It was when I prepared for my kidney donation surgery. Now, you'd think a serious surgery like this would come with all sorts of nerves and hesitation, but I was filled with this inexplicable joy. It didn't make sense to anyone, even me, but I knew it must have come from God. I was so full of joy that I celebrated by taking selfies with every nurse and doctor who came into the room to care for me. The connection was undeniable. God's joy had overflowed into my generosity and my generosity brought even more of God's joy. You guys, this is the power of living in the joy of the Lord. It strengthens us not only to serve, but to serve with gladness, reflecting his love to this world that's so desperately in need. So let me ask you this. How is God's joy overflowing in your life today? Are you sharing his love with those around you? This week, I wanna challenge you to do three things. One, spend time in prayer and in God's word. That's the point of this podcast. And ask him to fill you with his joy because that is your strength, right? Two. Look for opportunities to share what God, God's given you plenty, share it. Whether it's your time, your resources, your encouragement with someone in need. One practical opportunity we have right now is with an international ministry that's a part of our Unshackled Network, the Bethlehem Ministries in India. They have this annual outreach that they do to the poor and orphaned children there. And at Christmas time, they offer them toys and clothes and some food. They want to be a blessing and they invite us, their brothers here in America, to be a part of it. They call it Christmas joy. Maybe the joy of the Lord would compel you to share some of what you have with them. You can do that at the GoFundMe link that's in the description of this episode. And lastly, take time to celebrate what God has done in your life, even in the small things. As you do, you'll see that when God's joy fills you, his love will naturally flow through you. Can I pray for you? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your joy. We thank you that for your joy, for the joy that Jesus went to the cross, that joy compelled him in the greatest act of love. Father God, I pray that that same joy would live and abide in us and would work through us, would compel us towards act of loving kindness, towards acts of service and generosity toward our fellow man, fellow man and woman here. Lord, we thank you that you love us enough to live in us and work through us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. Thank you guys for joining me on this episode of the Five by the Fire podcast. You can sign up to receive each and every episode every week via email at unshacklednetwork.org forward slash Bible. You can get on our newsletter and find out about the things that we're doing as well. And make sure that you rate this podcast wherever you're listening so that others might actually discover it and be blessed by it as well. And if you'd like to leave a comment on today's episode, maybe uh, sharing how God has blessed you with it, uh, you can do that at fivebythefire.org or if you're watching it on YouTube, you can do that in the comments as well. But if you go to the website, you'll also find the show notes for each episode. 
That's it, fivebythefire.org. Well, guess what? My mic died right there at the end of the podcast, and I didn't even realize it till I was editing the video. So head on over to fivebythefire.org and leave a comment there. You can also check out the show notes right there as well. And this is also brought to you by the Ordered Chaos Club. You guys, the Ordered Chaos Club is all about trying to bring together Christian creatives who are ready to overcome challenges in their faith and their creative work so that we can use our God-given talents fully and uh, express our creativity like with confidence and with joy. Come on, we've been talking about joy today. And so that we can all go after progress and our most creative goals, our boldest creative goals this year. I think you're one of those if you are a creative. So come on, go on over to orderedchaosclub.com. You can get in as we're going through our founders cohort still, uh, 30% off until we close that down before we get to the start of the year. And that 30% off rate will be for the lifetime of your membership. And that's on a monthly membership of, at this point, it'll just be $17.50 a month. And you will be part of this growing community and you'll be on the front end of it. So having said that, I hope this has been a blessing to you and I hope to see you back here next week on Five by the Fire. Be blessed, be a blessing. Keep creating for God's glory. Peace.